All right, let's see. Um, where'd you? Oh, you put it there. Okay. Uh, let me have a look at it. Oh, what's? Well, oh, it's that, that side. Dirtier than it should have. It what? That sounded dirtier than it should have. I don't know if we can do this one. I mean, someone got hurt, but no, really. I don't think we could do this one. No. Oh my god! Oh shit! Oh shit! Well, now we have to. Now we fucking have to. Great. <laughs> well, that story got bumped. You can, thank, you can thank my boyfriend for that for that upcoming torment. <sighs> my god! Yeah. I don't know where he found it, but he texted it to me. It's it's a bad one, and somebody got hurt, but he hurt himself. But but it is kind of our thing. My God. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Let's let's um. Let's let's get to it. That's I'm saving that one for last. Oh boy. Um. Let's see here. Okay. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment. We like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? We're starting with a brief one. I, I'm just going to address this one in passing. Um, we're both Game of Boobs fans. Um, it, is, it is a wonderful show about more than just boobs. They, well, this year they turned it. They were like, like, it was almost like they were like, oh, you think there's too much sex on the show? Fuck you. Every time there's a sex scene, it's going to end in a horribly traumatic fashion. So, uh, you want a sausage? No. Yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, it's, like they, it's like they punished all the people like you who complained about the gratuitous sex. And now the gratuitous sex is followed by horrible trauma. So thanks for ruining it for us, Grandpa. You're welcome. Speaking of thanks for ruining it for us, apparently the show is very, very popular. Perhaps a little too fucking popular. Um. Ah, uh, yes. Americans yes, yes. are naming their baby girls Khaleesi. I mean, you kind of had to see this coming. Although... If they had any idea what they were doing, they would be naming their baby girls Daenerys. Daenerys, yes. All right, let's just start there. Number one, they're naming their children a title. Well, that's, it's queen. That's like you you named your daughter Baroness. You named yeah. your daughter Duchess. You named the dog Duchess. <laughs> you named the dog Indiana. You named, you named the dog Khaleesi, okay? You, you call the kid Daenerys if you want to use it. But on secondly... 146 kids in approximately 14 years are going to get their asses kicked on a daily basis. Until they give birth to those dragons. And they're going to fuck shit up. 146. Are you saying girls? You know what's going to be hilarious? What? How, what? What do you think the probability is that any of those kids wind up into equestrian? You know, it's what's what's uh, someone pointing out in the channel. It says 146 infants. It doesn't yeah, specify it sex. Doesn't say girls. There's one dude, one little dude named Khaleesi. You poor and son of a bitch. That's because it should be Carl. Yeah, yeah. It's like. Long. You name your kid Carl Drogo? Awesome. You just name him Drogo. He'll earn the call. It's true. All right. Our, our first one this week comes from uh, my hometown. And I'm a little... T this, is, this is one of those... I'm kind of disappointed because th th there was a lack of... Well, I shouldn't say lack of commitment, considering what the story's about. But uh, this guy, I don't I think he had his priorities a little off. Man who threatened to jump from Ravenel Bridge, taken into custody after getting pizza. <laughs> 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 
Police offer pizza to a man who's walking inside the ledge Ravenel. Suicidal man and a three-car wreck conspired to create a traffic nightmare for Mount Pleasant commuters Monday morning. Both situations resolved by noon and up for thousands of motorists endured lengthy delays. Um, problems began around 6.50 a.m. when a man parked his vehicle on the southbound shoulder and stepped across a barrier. He paced back and forth and threatened to jump into the Cooper River. Nearly a dozen motorists called 911. Traffic backed up for more than a mile as crews shut down the two right southbound lanes and tried to talk with the man. Um, so motorists tried to avoid the stall. They attempted to take a long way into Charleston via 526. That was a thick cloud of traffic. That's because three vehicles collided near the Clements Ferry Road because they were going the other two. Um, the despondent man had grown hungry and thirsty during his hours atop the bridge, and P police brought him a pepperoni, a pepperoni pizza from Andalini's and some water. After several tense moments during the next 15 minutes, the man was captured. They coaxed him down with a pizza. Well, I mean, if you have, if you feel that there's no reason to live and you're despairing and someone's like, hey, pizza. There's nothing left for my life. I can't do anything. No one will ever love me. Oh, God, pepperoni. Free pizza. Pepperoni. No mess. I mean, I mean, isn't that, isn't that a reason to keep going? Dude, at that point, it's like, why did you go buy your own damn pizza? Because this pizza was free. <laughs> and delivered with words of love and care. Oh, let's see. D.A. Scott Jr. apparently said something. What did he say? It's not depression. It's DiGiorno's. <laughs> Well played. Oh, God, we're going to hell for that one. Mike, Mike, uh, Mike contributed. Hey, Jumper, what do you want on your tombstone? Mike, that's my producer, ladies and gentlemen, Mike. Mike gave us bondage hippo. <sighs> that, that's just a little dark, man. Ah, uh, that's no dark. safe word. <laughs> Jake. I'm just, you know, okay, here's the thing. What's pissing me off is because this asshole gets up he there. Got, he kind of caused pandemonium for yeah, traffic. Caused a three and got car, free pizza. A three caused a three car pile up and got free pizza. And but I mean he's going to jail probably. Do you know I never understood why suicide's illegal? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like Like if you try to kill yourself and you don't pull it off, they can put you in jail. So it's that's incentive to practice, I guess. Be really good at it. I guess. What the fuck? I never understood uh, that. God. I sounds a little low. People say my sounds a little low. Hmm. Let me do something about that. Uh. Uh. Ah. All right. Well, I'll turn it up over here. Um. Is that better? Can you hear me better now? Anybody? Yes? No? Maybe? Man, we'll find out. I can hear you the same. Okay, you hear me the same. Well, well, I didn't turn up your mic. I turned out the other mic. Echo? What echo? Oh, echo. for fuck's sake, people. Yes, echo? There is no pleasing you. I know, I know, right? <sighs> anyway, so, um... You ever got anything off Craigslist? Um, no, but I was thinking about putting a few things on Craigslist. I did. I got a, I got a washer and dryer off Craigslist. Very good one, too. Very good washer and dryer. Set. My boyfriend just put a fake ad up for his friend's couch that I should find for you. Hang on. Well, you know, not hang on, but. I'll see if I can find it and share it with the group. Well, I and yeah, you've considered selling stuff on Craigslist. I've considered selling stuff on Craigslist, but um, there there needs to be a limit on on. Uh, there's a line. There's a fucking line, and that line is a uh, graveside coffin for sale on Craigslist with a surprise inside by Sophia Rosenbaum, NBC News. Shame on you. That headline. I don't want a surprise inside a coffin. Oh, God. The first sentence. The. Oh, no, no. The first no, Sophia Rosenbaum. 
The first fucking sentence. Iowa police have a bone to pick with a local man who's trying to sell a coffin on Craigslist. Yeah! All the dicks. Eat them all. All you can eat dicks just today for you, Sophia Rosenbaum. It's a dick I'm guessing buffet. The surprise in the coffin was not Gerard Butler from Dracula 2000. No. Um, Dave Bergstrom. Here's is, deep cut for you. Dave Bergstrom is selling an oak coffin for twelve thousand dollars on Craigslist to help fund the now defunct Council Bluffs chapter of the International Order of Odd Fellows, a fraternity that give, advocates giving money to the poor. But there's a skeleton inside the coffin. Um, he did not mention the human remains inside the coffin. Instead, he described the coffin as, quote, in very good condition with bronze handles in line with silk. He told the AP the coffin was used in the past for the group's rituals and that the bones had been in there for a long time. It was there as long as anyone could, could, could remember. That doesn't make it OK. That that. That doesn't make it OK. Used in the past for the group's rituals. What the fuck were they doing? What? Do they even know whose bones these are? No, they don't. Like, they can't identify them. That could be Hava. You're right, actually. Because they can't identify them. There's no identification for them. They just know it's a dead guy. And it could be worth a fuck of a lot of 12 grand. What? Worth more than 12 grand. If it's Hoffa. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's for the hell of more than 12 grand. I'm just... <laughs> oh, the skeleton was donated by a doctor in the 1880s. Used in their rituals. What are these people doing? With a coffin with a skeleton in it. I mean... <laughs> And then to sell the, they have the audacity to sell the thing. She's like, well, it's just, it's just got a little bit of a dead guy in it. You know, you, that'll wash yeah. right out. People are so uptight. You know, you just, you get some Clorox and, and, and a rag and it'll wipe right off. You know, it's fine. It's just little dead people, you know. <sighs> okay, uh, Flutterbeat. Well, it wasn't a skeleton when we put him in there. <laughs> when we put him in there, he was actually quite portly. Okay, um, this is, again, we're going back to the UK, although the last one was Ireland, I'll put, point out. Um, do you remember the... The skeleton one was Ireland? No, 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 the high chair guy. Remember the high chair guy? Oh, Edward yes. McDonald's? Um, he's got competition. Because that guy used his butt. This guy, this guy used his head. Police, man gets head trapped in traffic cone. Police had to be called to rescue a man in Hamill Hempstead Town Center became wedged inside a traffic bollard for two hours after putting his head as a joke. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, we got video. There, there he is. There's the guy stuck in the fucking traffic cone. <laughs> that's that's more than a traffic cone. That's like a it's like, it's pylon. Like, by looks of it. That's traffic cones in the UK, though. They're they're square that's, like that. Yeah. But they're huge. Yeah, but they're square like that. It's about it's about the size of a, of a regular traffic cone. It's just instead of being a cone, it's a square. He looks like some kind of video game character. <laughs> the man who put the plastic cone over his head while joking with friends Sunday had to be rescued by a policeman after he was unable to free himself. I came out of a Burger King, said uh, John Waterman, and this man had this bollard stuck on his head. I had to see him walking with his top of his head five minutes early, but now it was pulled right down. No one was helping him because they thought he was just messing around. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. If I saw this, I would just assume it was some kind of promotional thing. Yeah. That he was supposed to be something. And now, oh, God, oh, the poor bastard. He's rolling around in it. <laughs> Just Help look at them me. trying to pull Help him out of there. Me. Oh, they're grabbing his leg. <laughs> and they still can't get him out. <laughs> Do they have to, like, spray him down with butter or I something? I don't know. They're gonna have, if they go get the jaws of life, I'm going to fucking lose my shit. Or cut yeah. the thing off of him? What the... <laughs> 
Just leave the dude alone. What are you doing? Oh god, it's just it's hypnotic watching this poor bastard. And they're grabbing his legs again. Eh, 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 there you go. They got him out. All right. It's um, like it's like he was born again. <laughs> okay. Except smellier this time. That that Okay. No, no sympathy there, honestly. No, no fucking sympathy at all. If you're going to jam. Hmm? Pretty dumb. That's pretty dumb. If, if you're going to jam your head in something. That's your responsibility. That's all you. You have made the choice to put your head somewhere. It presumably does not belong. The consequences are yours to endure. You want to share with class? I know what you're thinking. Just, there's so many horrible jokes flooding yes, my brain that I'm going into like overload. Every time you say jam your head in something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Get it out of your system. Uh, no, 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 it's okay. I just jammed up for a minute there with all the horrible, horrible jokes. It's just, it's like I said that other time, we need like whiskers like cats. So they, cats have it's whiskers. <laughs> Because that's how and they know not to put their head between things that they touch the whiskers. It's too small. Yes, but the technique like the the idea is that we have cognition. Well, we're not using it. Yeah. Well, then what makes you think we would use the whiskers? I'm not saying use them. I think we can, we got genetic engineering shit. Just implant them in stupid people. <laughs> yes, but that wouldn't make it physically impossible for him to stick his head in there. No, but at least he would have a warning next time. I don't think so. OK, That's not help. <laughs> like, I'm sure somebody said, hey, don't do that. You might get stuck. <sighs> and yet now he's a YouTube legend for jamming his th that poor bastard. Idiot. If he's lucky, the Gregory Brothers will songify it. Okay, we're it's Florida time. Woo! Oh God. We need like a theme song for that. Well, Derek wrote us the Florida anthem. Oh, Florida. Yeah, this this one. Um, something, something. Do you remember the story about the guy who was running the dentist office out of his bedroom? I think so. Well, you know what? America is the land of opportunity. If a man can do it, so can a woman. Woman arrested for running fake dentist office at home. Fort Lauderdale. South Florida woman is accused of practicing bad medicine, now facing the law after authorities raided her home. According to police, Luz Angela Rios Osa. Am I say that at all right? Lou Angela? Uh, is that Lou Angela? Luz, 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 Luz Angela Rios Osa. She invited patients into her home while posing as a dentist. She faces charges of operating a dental office illegally without a license. Please posing please. as a dentist? Um, <laughs> yeah, she wasn't she even a dentist. No. Really? No. Even a dentist? Nope. Nope, not a dentist. Like, hey, cool, I got a pair of pliers. I'll take care of that abscess for you. Just come over to my place. It's yeah, cool. It's not like, okay, I know the internet has changed things. I know a lot of people who were considered amateur before are now doing things professionals do. Yeah, you can't learn how to give a root canal on WikiHow. No, no, you can't go pro after doing a few Google searches and suddenly you got your hand jammed in somebody's mouth. And she looks so pissed, too. Again, the jamming. I'm just saying. You're just saying, yeah. She looks so fucking pissed. Yeah, it's not. How did was she like bluff her way through it or something? Yeah, this this tooth is called the um, cruncher. And, I mean, I suppose uh, maybe she had gone to dentistry school and just wasn't licensed. It's like, oh, who but, needs all those years of school? I know what I'm doing. I've read books. I saw a little shop of horrors. It's just <laughs> about people. 
<laughs> I mean, technically, that makes me a dentist, I think. Um, I just like hurting people. Oh, my God. Last September, her ex-husband, John Colazos, was arrested for running a phony dental office. This is his wife? I don't know. Yeah, it is. Colossus oh was arrested God. when a woman came forward claiming she'd been inappropriately touched while in his chair. Yes, it's the same fucking guy. How did they not catch them at the same time? You would think after he got arrested, she would be like, okay, no. You would think they'd catch them both. You idiot! Wow. And you idiot. This right here is a big old endorsement for Obamacare, because you know why people were going to these people? Because they couldn't afford to go to a reputable, actual dentist. That's the only reason I can think of why people would voluntarily go to like the basement bootleg dentist. Yeah, you know, 100, 150 years ago. It, you could just say you were a dentist and start yanking out people's teeth, and that was your job, and you could do it. And you also cut hair. It was a barber. You, you cut hair, yank teeth, that was what you did. But that was before penicillin, for fuck's sake. We've come a long way since then. Long way. And like the autoclave. Yeah. You know? We figured like, did out just stick the tools in the microwave to sterilize them. We think, oh, God. Yeah, I just got to put these in here for a sec. Say, do you smell something? It smells like ozone. <sighs> OK, this was originally going to be the story we ended with. But and, I ruined that. And yes, this guy got a little hurt, but he's OK. But it is just too amazing. What? Someone, someone remembers my stories. Tara had a legit dentist that fucked up her teeth. Why make it worse by going to a fake one? Good point, Daya. Good point. The guy who fucked me up had a license. Okay. Have you ever seen those cops shows or like when animals attack and all that shit? And it's always some big, ferocious or fierce, like a bull or a bear they're trying to get down or some shit, you know? Yes. Well, have you ever seen a show called Call of the Wild Man? No. I learned about this show. My eight year old nephew's in love with this show. It's like this total redneck dude who just catches animals oh, yeah, of all yeah, types that are caught that, yeah. on people's property. Yeah. Like he cleared a kid's swimming pool of like eight snakes. What's he charged to get a monkey out of a car? Usually he gets paid in like, I don't know, sacks of potatoes or something like he got a angry raccoon out of a hot tub and he got to swim in the hot tub. And that yes, was yes, kids, we got video. Let's let's bring this up here. Officer Keith Moore, who was wearing his video camera at the time. Monkey bites cop during traffic stop getting a traffic ticket bites. A rookie officer in Arkansas was surprised to learn the man he was ticketing during a traffic stop had a pet monkey. Luckily, the officer had a camera attached to his sunglasses because we get to see the moment when the monkey jumped out and bit him as he handed over an electronic ticket for the driver to sign. I think this was the beginning of the movie Outbreaks. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Like, next thing you know, zombie plague. The officer, 21-year-old Keith Moore, recoils and walks back to his patrol vehicle. He tells his sergeant, quote, his monkey attacked me. Well, there are so many ways you could take that to start. Um, his mo he's got a monkey and it attacked my hand. I'm not even kidding, Moore says. Oh, good. The sergeant's got a response. A monkey? Like a legitimate <laughs> monkey? <laughs> Yeah, well, like a legitimate the monkey. Parentage. It's I not don't a know bastard monkey, monkey. A yeah. <laughs> <sighs> okay, where do we begin here? 
Why do you have a monkey in your car? Yes, it should. Everybody knows it should be cleaning your bathroom. Do you remember those trunk monkey commercials? No. It's a car company that was offering the trunk monkey, and uh, you, you push a button, and the monkey would come out and change your tire. I or the SNL commercial with Doreen Garofalo for bathroom monkey. Yeah, it's bathroom monkey. Yeah. Uh, this this is this is not no, those are not to be taken literally, people. Those are not real things. I mean, there are a lot of people have like helper monkeys. Yeah. This guy looks a little older. Maybe it's a helper monkey. It's not helping. Well, it thought it was. That's that. That is officially not fucking helping. <sighs> if your monkey doesn't like cops, you need to talk to the monkey. Or keep it on a chain or something, because... How do you know, though, that your monkey doesn't like cops until your monkey has bitten a cop? Well... Because, like, unless you're dealing with Caesar from Rise of the Planet of the Apes... <laughs> that thing ain't exactly writing you a dissertation. <laughs> it's not running no. around the house thing and fuck the police. Like, it's a monkey. Oh... Uh. So, Oh, Richard, did the cop has a, have a taser? He should have shocked the monkey. You know, I avoided making a shock the monkey joke, goddammit. I actually refrained, I restrained myself from making a shock the monkey joke. I just, I love monkey stories, and this is one of those where... I know how you love a monkey story. Monkeys can attack at any time, any place. You're not safe. They will rise. So Watch. paper beats rock, rock beats scissor, monkey beats ticket. <laughs> All right, we've, we've I've I've delayed this one long enough, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Blame sorry. Tom. I'm sorry. I'm well, actually mostly gentlemen. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. All right, every man watching right now, I want you to pay close attention. You're going to take this leg <laughs> and put it over this one, okay? Trust me. <clears throat> so we've talked about the bath salts, and, and we've talked about all that sort of things. And this is, this is kind of horrific, what we're about to talk about next. You know when, when Nancy Reagan said, just say no? Apparently she also meant salad. Yeah. We, we, we probably should have listened to her. Oh, you gave me the link, but yeah. Man rips off part of his penis. Cops say the drugs made him do it. A 41-year-old Columbus, Ohio man is recovering after police say... He ripped off part of his penis during a drug-fueled high. I didn't even know you could do that. The man was kneeling outside the school and bloody from the waist down with parts of his genitals ripped off. He said parts of the man's body were transferred to the hospital with him. He really wasn't saying much at all. A lot of yelling and screaming. He wasn't making sense. They couldn't really communicate with him in terms of a constructive conversation. I mean... That, that sort of only makes sense, given the scenario. He I feel like ripped. any dude, had he just ripped off part of his own dick, is not going to be super coherent. He's not going to be speaking to you in, like, iambic pentameter. Excuse me, sir? Sir, are you doing all right this evening? Sir? Sir? Okay, yes, sir, I'm going to need you to... I'm going to need you to put the penis down and tell us what the problem is. Sir, you're just not cooperating right now, sir. Sir? I no, you could rip off part of your penis. I didn't know either. Like, it. I mean, technically, you can rip off an arm because that's attached by a joint. And so there's something to rend. But a man told investigators later, obviously later, he picked up hallucinogenic mushrooms earlier in the day when he was in town visiting his friends in a neighborhood near the school. The man does not have a history of mental problems or extensive drug, Those drug are use. Not for friends. 
The people that gave you those mushrooms no. are not your friends. No. This is... How is this a fun drug? So what do you want to do tonight? We could go get some beers and, you know, hang out at the bowling alley or maybe smoke some weed. No, you know what I want to do tonight? I want to get blitzed out of my fucking head and rip my own dick off. Can do. The fuck? That's a party. That's a party. Jesus Christ. He grabbed the wrong mushroom. It's not a one-up. Oh. Handsome hobo. All the mushroom jokes. Handsome hobo. I am never masturbating again. I, just a little more than we needed to know, but okay. This is why you gotta be careful about doing shit like this. Okay? But I mean, how do you know, really, before you take a drug? Like, it's not like they come with warnings like the, like the, like a fucking Levitra commercial. Like, they're... When someone sells you drugs, he doesn't then tell you okay. this drug may have serious side effects, what? including ripping your own dick off. <laughs> if you rip your own dick off, contact your physician immediately. Like, drug dealers don't do that. Ask They're your doctor. You. Ask your doctor if dick ripping mushrooms are right for you. <laughs> I this I feel like we should make that commercial. You know how you do you know how you do it? And it's I'm not advocating this. You know how you do this very, very simply? Grow your own. Then you know exactly what the fuck you're taking. I was going to go with have a friend you don't like very much. Take everything before you do. OK, OK, that 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 works. But uh, a little taster type situation. But no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Steve, try this. Huh? Yeah, Steve just ripped his penis off. I'm not going to do that one. This is why you need a gimp. <laughs> oh, God, I hope they put it back on. <laughs> Poor bastard. Well, he ripped off part of it. Uh, even more. Uh, seemed like something you could just break a piece off of, you know? <laughs> like, it's spongy. God, <laughs> If it was the fact that tissue is spongy, like it's not there, it's not like snappable, you know, like, I mean, I don't have one. So maybe there, maybe I don't really fully understand the physics of it, but I, I, I'm confused as to how you can rip off just part of it without some kind of sharp implement involved. With enough drugs and enough determination, you can do anything. Maybe, maybe like he bit it off. No, hon, if he could reach his dick that way, he wouldn't be doing drugs. No, but I'm saying, like, maybe that's what he was trying, and because he was on shrooms, it went horribly awry. Like, he got there and suddenly started hallucinating that it was a snake. You're just going off on all these wonderful tangents. And next thing you know, he's got the head of the snake in his hand, and he's in a lot of pain. Tara, people are crying now. <laughs> My work here is done. So what have we learned this week? Wear a cup if you're going to do shrooms. Be sure where your damn drugs come from. Always buy from a reputable drug dealer. Man, he's going to go back to that guy and kick his ass. This will not be the only penis removed this week. I feel sure. Someone just told you to hang up on me. <laughs> No. Too bad. Um, we, we've learned that uh, you can. It's not what would you do for a Klondike bar? It's what would you do for a, a thick crust, you know, pepperoni with everything. I just I still I love this picture. I, I got to put this on the big screen. I'm serious, though. Like if you've got nothing left to live for and someone offers you free pizza. <laughs> just the picture of the cop with the pizza on the hood of the car. Trying to get that bastard to come down. Like, you can always kill yourself tomorrow after the free pizza. Right. right. Um, they, should, they should show up to every jumper with a pizza and be like, look, buddy, is it so bad that you're going to turn down free pizza? I don't think so. 
come have a slice. We'll talk it over. Yeah, you got a point. OK, yeah, nice point. Um, we've learned that you can try to save money during a funeral, but don't do it by buying a coffin on Craigslist. Yeah. Well, I can see reasons why you would, like if you want it for like a movie prop or if you own a goth club. You probably should. You could probably build your own at that point. Don't my, greater, my greater problem is selling unidentified bones in a coffin and not putting that in the ad. It's well, it's a bonus, I guess. They thought they were getting more than their. I mean, I guess if you want a goth club, that might be a bonus. We've learned. Uh, <laughs> they really got boned in that deal. Yeah. It's a boned us. Oh, uh, yeah, this. Uh, That's what I just said. Bone us. Bone us. Mm. We've learned that you should be sure your head can fit in something before you try to put it in there. Yes. You got something you want to add to that? Just anything? anything? No. Anything at all? No. Nothing? No. Nothing? I think I've wounded them enough for one night. We've learned that... <laughs> The family that uh, practice illegal dentistry together goes to jail together. Yeah. That was an unexpected sequel, wasn't it? Uh. Look, if your husband has already been arrested for the shit, stop. Well, she stop. has to pay for his defense attorney somehow. Yo, know, how much to get this cavity taken care of? Eh. You got a grape knee high? Yeah, okay. And finally this week, we learned monkeys can happen anywhere at any time <laughs> to anyone. What the cop didn't understand was that he would release the monkeys. If this man says he'll let the monkeys loose, he'll let the monkeys loose. That cop didn't understand monkeys. Goddamn understand monkey. Me? That's all right, see? Because people, they understand monkeys. Oh. Why is it always monkeys? Why is it never penguins? Why is it never hippos? Why couldn't a hippo jump out of a car and bite somebody? I suppose because you couldn't fit a hippo in your car. There you go. Answered your own. Thing. Tara, are you a redhead? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we learned that even Game of Thrones fans aren't really paying attention to Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Khaleesi, whatever. Show me the titties! Show me them titties! Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, Lannister, whatever, Tyrion, whatever. Titties! This is why you should pay attention to the show, or else your kid's gonna get his ass kicked. By The worst part is your kid's gonna get his ass kicked by other nerds. One guy. Like, why aren't you named Daenerys? What are your parents, stupid? And then the nerds are going to kick your kid's ass. There's one, How's that going to feel? There's one little boy out there named Khaleesi. That's like naming him Princess. That, I know he's out there. And you know what? In 20 years, he is going to be the greatest serial killer we've ever known. <laughs> 